The simplest explanation of quantum mechanics is that it represents the physics of time itself as a physical process, with classical physics representing processes over a period of time, as in Newton's differential equations. In such a theory, the universe would be a continuum formed by the spontaneous absorption and emission of light, with the wave-particle duality of light and matter in the form of electrons, forming a blank canvas that we can interact with, forming the possible into the actual. If our eyes were more sensitive to the light waves of the electromagnetic spectrum, we would be able to see that everything is continuously radiating electromagnetic waves representing a universal process of energy exchange. We can think of the atoms as standing waves in time, with light being a wave over a period of time, and only having particle characteristics when it interacts with the atoms. This process of energy exchange is therefore relative to the atoms of the periodic table, and because we are made of atoms, it is also relative to us. The wave-particle duality of light is relative to the energy and momentum of our actions, and therefore relative to the experiments we set up. This can be seen in the two-slit experiment. When we turn on an electronic detector, the interference pattern collapses and becomes part of the past in the reference frame of the experiment. If we turn the detector off, over a period of time, the interference pattern will reform. We are always in the center of our own reference frame as part of this universal process of energy exchange with the potential to interact with other reference frames, such as the two-slit experiment. Reference frames are continuously changing and coming in and out of existence, with photon energy continuously cascading down from the sun, forming greater degrees of freedom for entropy or disorganization, forming the passage or continuum of time. The light photon forms the movement of charge with the flow of electromagnetic fields in three-dimensional space. The momentum of the light in the form of the spontaneous absorption and emission of photon energy forms the driving force for this process, with charge being an innate part of all matter. When objects touch, it is charge that makes contact and when the atoms bond and break, there is an exchange of photon energy with the movement of charge. For the electromagnetic force to form what we measure as a period of time relative to the atoms of the periodic table, we need another fundamental force, and this comes in the form of the strong nuclear force, or interaction. The strong nuclear force holds matter together, being a short-range force that only works inside the atomic nucleus. This is just what we need if we have an interactive process relative to the electron probability cloud that surrounds the nucleus. In other theories it can seem puzzling that there is no concept or flow of time in the subatomic world within the atoms that is governed by the strong nuclear force. But in this theory nothing could be more logical, because the future is unfolding with each new photon-electron coupling or dipole moment in an interactive process that is unfolding outside the atomic nucleus and is relative to the electromagnetic force. In such a theory, the mathematics of quantum mechanics represents the physics of time as a physical process, with classical physics representing processes over a period of time, as in Newton's differential equations. In ancient Greece, it was believed that the atoms were indestructible, 
but now we know this is not so. Atoms that decay with an unstable atomic nucleus emitting radiation could represent a problem for a theory that says that the future is unfolding photon by photon relative to the atoms of the periodic table. But the weak nuclear force explains radioactive decay with some very unusual characteristics that can only really be understood as part of a logical process if what we see and feel as the continuum of time is formed by photon-electron interactions. It is impossible to predict when a particular atom will decay regardless of how long the atom has existed. However, for a group of atoms, the group expected decay rate is characterized in what is called half-lifes. The half-life represents a time after which half of the group's nuclei will have decayed. Mainstream physics has no objective or logical understanding of why we should have such a property as half-life when we are dealing with decaying atoms. But if time and the future itself is relative to the atoms interacting with electromagnetic radiation or light, it would be logical that probabilities are built into the process itself. Therefore we can't predict the decay of an individual atom and only measure the half-life of a group of atoms. It is interesting that when we have an atom with an unstable atomic nucleus emitting radiation, there is the potential that the future will be relative to that radioactivity. This might be in the form of a potential cancer risk. I like to think that this represents the delicate symmetry of space and time that life is based upon being broken by the radiation. This idea is supported by the weak nuclear force being the only known interaction that does not conserve parity and violates CP symmetry. In this theory the future is unfolding with the movement of charge, with matter-antimatter annihilation, representing a fundamental part of the process. The annihilation of the antimatter represents the past, with perfect symmetry between positive and negative charge, and between matter and antimatter. It is this symmetry that is represented by CP symmetry that is broken by the radiation or radioactive decay of the weak force or interaction. We could say that there is a mirror image between the future and the past at the moment of creation or at each dipo moment. The three fundamental forces that have been explained so far the electromagnetic force, the strong nuclear force and the weak nuclear force are all interactions that are carried by a quantum or an elementary particle. The gravitational force is the odd one out and is modelled on a continuous classical field. Mainstream physics believes this is because the elementary particle that forms gravity has not yet been found. But in this theory it is because gravity is not a real force at all. It is only a secondary force to the electromagnetic force. This idea is supported mathematically with electromagnetism and gravity sharing the inverse square law representing the geometry of this universal dynamic process. Every action creates a reaction and the inward force of gravity is a reaction to the outward momentum of photon energy with the movement of charge as a process of continuous energy exchange or continuous creation. Photon energy slows up the rate that time flows forming a vortex in space relative to the energy and momentum of each object. Mass will increase relative to this with the time dilation 
of Einstein's relativity being part of this universal process. There is no action at a distance in this theory. Just as in Einstein's theory of general relativity, the gravitational field propagates at the speed of light with the electric and magnetic fields. Within such a dynamic process, we can think of electromagnetism as an interactive ether that moves relative to the Earth. Therefore, it would not show up in any experiment that was relative to the movement of the Earth. This process unites gravity with the other three fundamental forces within a universal process that is unfolding in just three dimensions with one variable in the form of time. In such a theory, the parallel universes of string theory are just future possibilities and opportunities in our one three-dimensional universe. Exchange, continuous creation. Such a process would form the driving force for the complexity and diversity of cell life, with photon energy forming the movement of positive and negative charge with the build-up and distribution of charge being relative to the membrane of each living cell. At high temperature in the form of plasma, we have a phase change of matter with charge being able to cover a large area of interstellar space or even a whole star. This can be seen in a solar eclipse when magnetic field lines can be seen in the sun's outer corona. Therefore it is totally logical that we have one universal process from the cells within us to the stars above us. At the most fundamental level this is a process of spherical symmetry forming and breaking relative to the atoms of the periodic table. The reason why there is something rather than nothing is that a process of spherical symmetry forming and breaking will naturally form entropy or disorganization with a built-in potential for ever greater symmetry formation. This is because in such a process the future is not based totally on uncertainty. It is based on broken symmetry relative to the structure of the atoms. When the spherical symmetry is broken it has the potential to form the most beautiful of geometrical shapes with the Fibonacci spiral being visible almost everywhere in nature. It is because these spirals are formed out of broken symmetry that they are never perfect. There is an incredible diversity of objects that have formed the Fibonacci spiral and the only thing they have in common is that their spirals were all formed over a period of time relative to the atoms of the periodic table. This is logical in this theory because the future is continuously unfolding with an exchange of photon energy relative to the atoms of the periodic table. In my other videos I explain the whole theory by just one equation representing the dynamic geometry of this process. Thanks for watching. Please share and subscribe. It will help the promotion of this theory.